Welcome back to our channel. It's a girl funny lungu back with another reaction video. If you are new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Today, I'm going to be reacting to Young Girl Accept, Accepts Islam Speakers Corner. It's been a while since we've reacted to any Speakers Corner videos, and I'm excited to be reacting to this. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. So, without wasting time, let's get into the video. No people get scared. They think, oh, I'm going to shine. You're going to have like this white light coming here, and then uh, there's going to be flowers and something uh, strange is going to happen. Sister, if you take your shahada, all it means is this there was a door. You've been analyzing that door for a long time. You want to go through that door and start your journey. But what advice would you give when you're a reaper? Me too. Yeah, of course. Yeah, cool. And inshallah, you're going to be a reaper today as well. Yeah? What advice would you give to our sister? Uh, I was Christian before, yeah. and uh, I read the Quran, and easily at the first verses I was convinced. Before the video starts, guys, check out our sponsors, Nature's Blends. They specialize in premium Ethiopian black seed products. Their products are fantastic health supplements and also from the Sunnah. The website is in the description link below. You can also use the discount code SALAM10 for 10% off their products. What are you guys waiting for? Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, sister. So you were saying? Um, so I'm thinking of taking my shahada soon. But I have some not doubts, but some questions, questions that I have. Yeah. Same. Same. Um, like before I came to Islam, I was the same as you. Yeah. Um, like you know, I was convinced, but there was a few little things. Yeah. Uh, inshallah, and I'm, I'm here at your service. Inshallah, sister. If there's anything that I can help with. So if there, what, what, what are those specific? Um, I know this is incorrect, but I'll just say it. Um. The Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, his marriage to Aisha. Yes, okay. yeah. yeah, we've done videos on this, yes. but I still, it doesn't fully make sense to me. Okay, all right. Like, so, so what, yeah. what, what would you, what, what troubles you? Like, be honest. Like, I don't, I don't even feel shy. Just be honest. Say, look, Baba Ali, this is what I don't understand. It doesn't make sense to me. I can clarify. You. Her age. That's Her it. Age. Okay. All right. So let's tackle this, this with a specific instance. Okay. Now. Firstly, what we need to understand is that child to adolescence, yeah, that specific period, is different from now to back then, yeah? Mm -hmm. Now, everybody speaks on behalf of Aisha, yeah? yeah? Everyone speaks on her behalf. Everyone wants to be a hero, like, yeah, we're here, we're speaking on behalf of her, yeah? But the question is, these people, they only use that against the Prophet, yeah, because they don't like him, mm -hmm. yeah? I don't believe it's because they genuinely care, oh, Aisha was six. They don't like him and they want to use anything against him. Yeah. Yeah? So what we learn from that is that when people come and attack the Prophet because of that, mm -hmm. we say, hold on a second, you're attacking him because you think he's doing something wrong yeah. and because you don't like him, yeah? Like the far right and mm -hmm. people like that, yeah? Now, at the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, he had um, his uncle, Abu Jahan mm -hmm. and Abu Lahab, yeah? They hated the Prophet. Yeah. But for some reason, within that time, none of them used this against them. So none of them came and said, hold on a second. You know, they called him like a, a magician, a soothsayer, a, a poet, um, all kind of stuff. But none of them ever, ever attacked him and say, why are you marrying Aisha at six? Yeah. So number one, the thing that we need to understand is that his enemies, his worst enemies, yeah. never used it against him. Why? That's point number one, yeah? Now, point number two. We have to look if let's tell me someone that is dear to you. My mom. Your mom, yeah? Now you know your mom, yeah? Yeah. If I said to you, your mom, um, I saw your mom steal something. Yeah. Would you believe me? No. Why? Because <laughs> I know my mom. Good. So what you're doing is you're going based on testimony of I know my mom. Yeah. My mom wouldn't do that. Yeah. So what are you basing it on is the prophet I mean your mom's life yeah how long you've known her and your your uh your emotionally attached to her besides that that could be subjective yeah mm -hmm. that could be <coughs> conflict of interest however because you know her you know what she's like yeah. you know she's not bad you base that and say no my mom would never do that yeah now if i came and showed you a 
footage of your mum taking something <laughs> and walking out the store. Just because Jesus says. Would you then believe me? Yeah. Okay, would you not think to yourself, what excuses would you make for that scenario? If I just showed you the footage, she's walking out with something in her hand. What excuses would you give to defend your mum? You, you haven't proved that she didn't pay for it. She haven't what? You haven't proved that she didn't pay for it. Good. Number one. Number two, could she have forgotten? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> variety of excuses. Yeah. Reasons, yeah. Why? Because in your head, your mum, you know your mum. Yeah. And your mum wouldn't do that. So now with us, we know the prophet. We look at his whole life. Yeah. And we say, hold on a second. This man, yeah, when he was being persecuted, being trying to be killed, yeah, and I think Surah uh, Muhammad it talks about how they were plotting to kill the Prophet, yeah, mm -hmm. and Allah saved him, yeah. So in many instances he was being attacked. When he conquered uh, Mecca, mm -hmm. he didn't get people killed. He yeah. said today is the day of mercy. He forgave them, yeah. How he was when his son died, his wife Khatija, yeah. So what we do is we look at his whole life and say, hold on a second, this doesn't make sense. We know the Prophet. Yeah. He wouldn't do what you're claiming he would do. Yeah. Because from what we know, he's not that person. So what that means is your perception of what has become the wrong of today. Now, the Prophet, peace be upon him, he did not want to. He didn't propose to Aisha Radir and her before. She was supposed to get married before. Did you know that? No. She was, she was, yeah, Aisha, yeah. Aisha, 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 Aisha was proposed to you before. Let's see how he yeah? does it. So, point number one, he was, she was proposed to you before. So if she was proposed to you before, it shows that that was the norm of that society. Yeah. Yeah. So now, secondly, the Prophet, peace be upon him, when he proposed, he was married to Khatija for 25 years. Mm -hmm. He was 25 years old. Yeah. Khatija was 14. Yeah. Now, we look at his life and we say, okay, what do we get from this person? Yeah. If I'm a 25-year-old man, why would I marry a 40-year-old woman? I'm 25, can I not marry a young girl? Can you marry a young can girl? I, if I'm 25 years old, yeah. would I not want to marry a younger girl? Oh, yeah. I would want to. Uh, yeah. 40 years may be a bit too old for me. Yeah? Yeah. By the time I'm 40, she's going to be 55. Yeah. Oh, so, so then, Khatija, marriage to Khatija, yeah? And he stayed married to her for 15 to 20 years. Mm -hmm. So now the question that needs to be asked is this. If the Prophet had those kind of sexual urges and desires, why did he find the need in a society where women were objectified, yeah? And you could marry two, three, four, as much as you like. He stayed married to one woman for majority of his life. So we need to question and say, hold on a second, what does that teach us about a person? It teaches his character. Yes? He must have, no, but it shows it must have been a genuine person who could have married multiple women, but he stuck to one woman, yeah, yeah who was a business, she was a businesswoman, yes, for a long amount of time. So that negates and takes the factor out of his pedophilic uh, wanting to marry a child, yeah? yeah. Now, let Aisha speak on behalf of herself. Everybody speaking on her behalf. Everyone's speaking on our behalf, yeah? Everyone's saying, oh yeah, why this happened, that happened. Hold on a second. Aisha is one of the biggest female scholars in Islam. <laughs> biggest female scholars in Islam, yeah? She has narrated over 2,000 hadith. She's like a scholar, yeah? And one of the people in Medina who would give fatwa was Aisha. There was Ali Radiran, Umar ibn Khattab, um, uh, Ibn Masood, Ibn uh, ibn Abbas, uh, and a few other people. She's one of the people who people will come for verdicts. You know, we go to a scholar, like a yeah. teacher, oh, uh, is it, can I have this, is it uh, all right for me to have this drink that has 1% alcohol? Yeah. <laughs> people would go to Aisha to get fatwa. So let me get this right. Aisha, she narrates from the Prophet that they would watch the Abyssinian tribes dancing mm -hmm. and she would put her cheek on the Prophet's shoulder. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense to me, yeah? They would race together, yeah? So for yeah. example, in her younger age, when they were like when they were married, the Prophet would beat her. No, 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 she would, she would beat the Prophet, yeah? Mm -hmm. And as she uh, grew a bit more older, <laughs> they had a race again, yeah? As she went okay. through a bit, eh? yeah. she uh, really got stronger. Thank you for your commentary. You're can welcome. I, can I, I, I continue? Point, Thank you. You're yes. Welcome. You should do some football commentary as well. <laughs> Anyway, so when they were racing, this time the Prophet won, yeah? Mm -hmm. And he made a joke and he said, look, you've put on weight. 
<laughs> and when he would drink, he would drink. So when someone like when they would drink water, he would drink from the exact place that she drank. Mm -hmm. Now, you can understand this in two ways. The paedophilic issue is not a Muslim problem; it's a white man's problem. Oh. Yeah, it's because let me tell you why. Most paedophiles, 100 percent, 99.9 percent .9 of paedophiles are white middle-aged men. No. So now, no. yes, no. yes, yes, it speaks out for itself. <laughs> I'm not even going to bring those stats. Go and see why white middle-aged men, most, not one of them, are going to Thailand. Yeah, go. Are they going for uh, to have uh, a nice drink or are they going for something else? Yeah. So now, this paedophilic attitude, this paedophilia that's going, the problem that's happened is this system. We look at men here today who want little kids for wrong reasons and do disgusting stuff with them, and we equate it with the prophets. That's not right. Because 1400 years ago, in this country, 100 years ago, yeah, in this country, I think William, um, I forgot his name, William Lane something, yeah, in his commentary of the UK common law, woman could get married at seven years old in this country, in the UK, seven, hundred years ago, yeah? I'll, I'll find it for you. Hundred years ago, they could get married at seven years old in this country. So the point here is this, is, yeah? Is that the prophet, peace be upon him, did not, he was all of his, some of his wives were 70, 80 years old, yeah? He had wives and he married them for political reasons, variety of other reasons, yeah? So to equate him, of doing a paedophilic action based on what's going on, the perverted actions of today, is wrong to do that. That's point number one, yeah? Now, what we say is that Aisha Radio Anna became a woman. How? Because he married her at six. That's a contract. It doesn't mean you're moving together. Yeah. You don't have got uh, heard of betrothal. So what that means is, like, you know, like when you're young, they'll say, yeah. okay, you were betrothed with your cousin. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So now, what they did is, they said you're married. The prophet waited three years. Why would a man with perverted, if, if, if he was like that, why would he wait three years? He'll say, no, I'm a prophet of God. I want, her, I want her now. He waited three years. Why? He consummated the marriage at nine. Why did he wait three years? Because she wasn't an adult yet. Yeah? So now, today, girls, if you look at the ages that they menstruate, go to NHS. Yeah? Nine, ten, eleven. Very interesting. I have to agree that yes, things are not the same. But I think when you're young, you're young. If you're a baby, you're a baby. If you're 18, you're 18. If you're an adult, you're an adult. But, like I said, things were very, very different back then. And I had no idea that he actually waited for her for three years before, I guess, they moved in together or something. How come I've never come across such a video that talks about uh, Muhammad actually waiting for his wife or his wife to be wife? Uh, if you guys have any videos where that is spoken about, I would really, really, really love to listen to those narrations. So feel free to link them in the comment section below. Um, let me get to the second part.